Joining us down the line, Chris Knuckles Nylon here on Puck Daddy Radio with Wyshynski and Pizzo. How are you, Mr. Nylon? Hey, I'm not from I'm not from Boston. I am from Nova Scotia. Hey, you little bugger. Hey, geez, <laughs> geez, 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 hey let's go to the tavern hey. and have a couple glasses of beer. Hey, Jesus, oh. maybe a little clamato oh. juice. <laughs> So you'd like to have some, you'd like to have some pups over there, eh? So hey, listen, yeah, have a couple you, pops, you, eh? Were you at the what's dentist go, today? What's going on, boys? What's happening? Were you at the dentist today? Yeah, I was just in the dentist chair. Yep, getting my te- my teeth all fixed up. Yeah, I'm getting implants. I got got them knocked out, and I um I have to have them uh, all done over again. Chris Nyland had teeth many? knocked out. No, it's usually the other guy who I Chris Nyland four stitched. knocked out, but I I've had some problems with my other teeth because of it. I lost a lot of bone and stuff, so I'm getting all implants. So yeah. Did you pain. have? Did you only lose? Did you only lose four teeth during your playing days, or how many did you lose no, during your playing I, days? No, I lost them. I got punched in the mouth uh, in a street fight. I got cracked, and uh, I lost them. And then I I had uh, other things put in, and then I got hit with a puck and knocked them out again. So yeah, but. Yeah, no one really did it to me, you know. A puck, puck did it to me. Puck daddy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sir. So, all right. So, you've got yourself some experience with uh, with Boston and with Montreal. What What do you think of this series so far between the Habs and the Bruins? Obviously, the Bruins getting back into it with a big win at Bell Center last night. I picked. I, well, I picked M- Montreal in six at the start of the series, and um, you know, I I just thought. Having uh, they got beat up so bad in that one game, and then they come back to make a statement and they lost seven nothing. They didn't even show up for the game, and I felt as though they had something to prove. Uh, you know that they could win without Halak and they could win with Price. One, two. I truly believe that the Boston Bruins have all the pressure in the world on them because they have to win. They have to win because the previous two years, last year losing to Philly when they were up three zip. And the previous year, bowing out in the first round, Claude Julien and the Boston Bruins have all the pressure in the world on them. They have to win. If he doesn't win the Stanley Cup this year, he's out of there. And, um, you know, I think Montreal, they come up and uh, they, 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 they skated well the first two games in Boston. They executed well. They, they clogged up the neutral zone. They didn't give Boston the middle of the ice at all. They kept on the outside. Price made big saves, timely saves. And when he when he's doing that, he's going to be successful. Last night he had a little hiccup there on that giveaway on the third goal, and it put that game mm. a little bit out of reach for them. You know, coming back from a two goal deficit, yeah, and the third goal just killed them. Hey, what do you think is a Dano Chara as a player? I mean, there, there was so much talk about him this year as far as the, the, the dirtiness of the hit on Patchy Reddy, whether or not it was or wasn't. Uh, this series, he's a bit of a lightning rod for the Habs fans. What, what's your take on Chara as a player? I like Char as a player. You know, that was out of, you know, I'm going to say that was out of character for him for doing that. But, you know, he he, he said, and he was really mad at Max Pacioretty for that, uh, the game in Boston where Max pushed him a little in the back, just give him a little shove after the goal. And, um, uh, you know, he had in, in his mind that he was going to get even with Max for that shove in the back. Now, he is quoted as saying that he didn't even know who the player was coming up the ice, which is total bullshit. OK, because he, he knew who was coming up the ice. And when he hit him, he did give him an uh, extra shove and he had his elbow in there and, and drove his head right into the stanchion. Now, um, you know, to me, the league is full of shit uh, uh, and not coming down with a suspension. And, uh, you know, Colin Campbell, you know, these days, he, he's, he's awfully uh, uh, off. He's really off base in a. And a lot of the things that happened, just Torres the other night, Rafi Torres, you know, no suspension. Um, you know, to me, that um, that relates to no balls by Colin Campbell. Chris, Knuckles Nyland coming on Puck Daddy Radio with us today. Now, Chris, I want to quickly talk a little bit about just the actual rivalry between Montreal and Boston because it's, it seems to really have been renewed this year with everything that happened, as you mentioned, the Chara hit and everything else. I was taking a look at your, your, your playoff history as a hab against the Bruins. You faced them five times in the playoffs. Three of them went to seven games. The other two were sweeps. You won two. You lost three. Now, as a guy from Boston, a guy from Boston, as a Montreal Canadian, how how big was this rivalry as far as the hatred goes? I mean, when you were a hab and you were taking on the Bruins, did you hate that team as much as it looked like you did on TV? Oh, yeah. I really did. I hated playing. Um, against, no, I loved playing against them. I hated the team. 
Um, I, I I don't really care for anybody I play against, um, and I try and win and, and and do the best job I can. But yeah, Boston. You know, when my mom and dad would go to the games, and I got eighteen thousand people yelling, "Nylon sucks." You know, I I <laughs> had a personal agenda there, and uh, as well as a team agenda, and that was to win. And um, you know, uh, that's that's what we did against them in the playoffs. Let me ask you this: What hab did you hate the most in your playing days? What hab? Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. What Bruin? Sorry, what Bruin did you what hate the Bruin? most? Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's uh, just one guy. I I hated it. Was just the team. I didn't like the team. As far as um, you know, uh, fighting guys. I mean, they, I, every time I went in that building, they had five potential fighters. I mean, they had when I first came in, it was O'Reilly, Jonathan Secord, Wensink, Cashman. Uh, then Jay Miller come along, Brian Curran come along. Uh, you know, they had a cast of characters there. And, um, you know, I was the type of guy that if I'm going into that building, I wasn't going to wait for one of them to come after me. I'm going to oblige whoever I feel like obliging that night. And, um, you know, I, I oftentimes I go in that building and try and set the tone for my team. Um, and that would mean, like, go out there and run someone right away and try and get, get the whole thing started, you know. You were a guy that scored 21 goals and had 358 penalty minutes in the same season. Do you do you see anybody in the league now that you you would consider uh, cut from the from the Chris Nyland mold? I don't know. I honestly, I I I, I, I don't see it. Uh, and you know, you're never going to see somebody with 356 minutes again. <laughs> I don't think the way that are, are you are, are you test are you testing Dan Carcillo to try to <laughs> try to get to that level, sir? No. Uh, honestly, I just I don't see I don't see it. It's now guys, you know, they call each other on their cell phones to set up a fight for the following week. There's no spontaneity. I mean, you know, you look at that um, Patrick incident. No one went, uh, with with Chara, No one went after him. I don't care who you are. You don't even have to be a fighter if you're a teammate. Uh, someone should have went after him, and uh, no one did. And and those are the type of spontaneous things that happened when we played. I mean, if someone did that to Matt Snavlin and I was on the ice, it would have been hell to pay. Um, you know, and, and that's just it. And we policed ourselves. Uh, I think there was more respect for the player um, back then. Yeah, there was some, some good open ice checks where guys had their heads down. But, um, again, there's a whole lot of different things in it today. They, guys are bigger and faster. No red line. Uh, no more hooking and holding. Doesn't allow the defenseman to get in there and get turned up ice. Used to be able to get a little hook on a guy and impede his progress just enough so that defenseman could get his shoulders turned up the ice and see the ice and move the puck. Now he's going back there. You got someone right up his butt. You can't you can't really you know, get in the way of anybody or it's interference. And um, you know you're seeing as a result you're seeing all these concussions. That uh, coupled with the uh, the equipment now. I mean uh, you know back when I played I, I wore those little Koopa leather caps on my shoulders. With no protection in the front, I had a little soft. I, I used Bala Junior Elite elbow pads. I mean, I didn't even, you know, they were like foam. They didn't have a whole lot of um, protection there. You know, just if I fell, it, it cushioned the blow a little bit. But uh, you know, the, the equipment is somewhat of a weapon nowadays. The elbow pads are so so rigid, uh, really hard plastic that you know the speed these guys are going. And, one guy throws his elbow up and catches someone in the head. You know, you, you are dizzy, and uh, you're seeing all these concussions as a result of those things I just said. Chris Nyland, former NHLer with the Habs Bruins as well, uh, joining us on Puck Daddy Radio. Chris, before we let you go, KnucklesNyland.com. Tell us all about it. KnucklesNyland.com, our website. Uh, you know, we got a bunch of fight videos on there, pictures. Uh, we, we have some uh, with T-shirts. We, we just trademarked the Knuckles logo. We're going to have hats pretty soon, uh, hoodies, all different uh, types of uh, clothing, apparel with a uh, fist on it. And on the back, uh, uh, it says, never back down, never stay down. And part of the proceeds go to the Montreal Children's Hospital, which is a charity that was near and dear to me when I played hockey here. So, uh, you know, there's something there to benefit everybody. It's a great website, a lot of fun. I blog and do the games uh, every day after the game, and we'll – Get on the blog. I'm also on Twitter, Knuckles Nyland number thirty, and um, yeah, it, it's been a lot of fun. You know, I'm having fun with it, uh, and it's good to be around the game of hockey again. Chris Nyland, thanks that, so much for coming on. We appreciate it, guys. Anytime. 
哎